Rivian's latest partnership with the Volkswagen Group could be a game changer for the electric vehicle industry, but not in the way one might think. Volkswagen is investing strategically around $1 billion in the publicly traded Rivian company, whereas Rivian is going to provide Volkswagen with leading vehicle software technology to help them scale up their own EV business. This software on the surface might seem like something like the infotainment that is available on two large screens inside all Rivian products. But in reality, it stems deeper into the electrical architecture as well as the power distribution of Rivian's EVs. The idea here is very simple, folks. The one who controls the brain of the car is the one who wins out at the end with growing market share in electric cars. It isn't necessarily about the product you're building, but in this new revolution, it's much more about the software, the integration, and the customer experience that you're providing to the end user that really sets you apart. These so-called software-defined vehicles, or SDVs, will be jointly developed between Volkswagen Group and Rivian for vehicles that might be launched by the end of this decade. Meanwhile, more in the short term, both of the companies are going to evaluate and discuss these technology platforms in engineering designs as well as product development for the next few years as they expect to actually establish the JV by the end of this year. And this is a pretty big deal. Because this brings the expertise of manufacturing, scale, and product knowledge of the Volkswagen Group, which owns multiple brands like Porsche, Lamborghini, Audi, and even Bugatti, into the expertise of electrical architecture, and even making EVs at scale without losing a significant amount of money like Rivian is doing right now. Rivian, as a matter of fact, is one of the only companies that is nearing gross margin profitability while selling thousands of units per month of their R1S and R1T trucks. They happen to have the best brand satisfaction according to Consumer Reports and having one of the best resale values for EVs even a few years later. And what's more so is that in the 2025 models of both of their vehicles, they have reduced their cost of goods sold by almost 20% by reducing the ECU count, wiring harness length by over 1.6 miles, and actually boosting the performance of the vehicle with 0 to 60 times and ranges that beat the 2024 counterparts. With their new LFP battery pack and quad motor in house developed technology, the company achieves a 0 to 60 time and a range that beats essentially every other EV pickup truck on the market today, including the likes of the Tesla Cybertruck, the Chevy Silverado, the Ford F1 Lightning, and obviously the Hummer EV. And what's more is that these new vehicles are expected to be much easier to manufacture with reduced fasteners, reduced numbers of welds, as well as a simplified electrical architecture. And that doesn't necessarily come at the cost of features, because these new 2025 models are expected to have a total of 11 external cameras with 4K HDR units that can see three times farther and 10 seconds ahead at highway speeds. Rivian claims that these are the highest megapixel cameras of any vehicle sold in North America, along with, with being one of the very first with an NVIDIA drive or in processor that delivers 10 times the computing performance compared to the outgoing models. And guess what? The most expensive part of the entire vehicle, which is the battery pack, itself is still made of 2170 cylindrical cells, but the pack enclosures are now made from large high-pressure die castings to simplify manufacturing and reduce mass, all in the interest to also reduce serviceability complexity and assembly costs. And with their in-house developed motor housings now oil-cooled instead of liquid-cooled internally, 
they're able to reduce the size, reduce the weight, and actually increase net power output to 1,025 horsepower and 1,198 pound-feet of torque. To put that into perspective, that's enough to propel the R1T from 0 to 60 miles an hour in 2.5 seconds. And although this might not seem like a big deal to anybody unfamiliar with power electronics, the new Rivian R1S and R1T have only 7 ECUs, down from 17 in the previous models. This is a huge deal, because shifting to this now zonal system architecture reduces over 1.6 miles of wiring and sheds 44 pounds of weight just in copper and insulation alone. Now every part of the vehicle like infotainment, body control, autonomy, vehicle access, drive units, and even the battery management system are all just controlled by seven ECUs, which adds a significant level of software complexity. And this right here, folks, is exactly what somebody like Volkswagen is betting with Rivian on. Electric vehicles require over the year software updates to be competitive. And it's really hard to do that without the consolidation that's offered by such a zonal architecture. It allows you to decouple hardware and software through abstraction layers in the software stack that Rivian is developing so that one zonal controller implements the functionality of several previously separate ECUs. And the whole point here is that these abstraction layers can be constructed with less and more commoditized compute hardware. What's more is that these controllers can achieve silicon consolidation and integration. Meanwhile, smaller node sizes can boost their power efficiency, which is critical in battery electric cars. This means that the systems on a chips utilized within a Rivian vehicle can be of node sizes smaller than 16 nanometers, which is crucial for accelerating hardware performance and reducing overall cost. This at the end of the day is how vehicles should be produced, because this is a technology that can be licensed to other OEMs in their efforts to reduce costs and complexity itself. It isn't necessarily in the motor technology or even the battery pack, which is obviously already having a huge supply chain behind it and something Rivian relies on significantly like every other EV maker. These more powerful chips enabled by their zonal structure will allow the company to advance their advanced driver assistance systems and their autonomy platform for self-driving on the highway. And that, in and of itself, is something extremely valuable to legacy automakers. But as usual, folks, that is just my take on the situation. Let me know what you guys think on Rivian and Volkswagen's new investment partnership and how this could evolve for both companies. Thanks a lot for watching, folks, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.